Hello everyone, this is Eddie the Magic Monk. Today we're going to talk about how to convert a complex number from standard form to polar form. So the first thing we're going to do is define a complex number and write it in standard form. So we have z equals um, let's say 2 plus 3i, a very simple complex number and what you're gonna do next is you're gonna draw a argon diagram and you're gonna draw this complex number on it so I have two along the real axis and three along the imaginary axis and I put a dot on it representing Z okay and I draw a straight line from the origin to Z and there are two things that you have learnt to find which are the um, modulus and the argument of Z so we need both of these numbers if we want to convert it from um, standard form to polar form so to get the modulus which is the length of this line you would go square root of 3 squared plus 2 squared so if you don't know how to do this have a look at our previous lesson okay so it's square root of 9 plus 4 which is square root of 13 Okay, now let's try to get the argument of Z. So the argument is the angle that this line makes with the horizontal. And it is found by doing uh, inverse tan, bracket, opposite over adjacent. So that's inverse tan, 3 over 2. And if you put that in your calculator, so you put it on degrees and then you go inverse 10 bracket 3 over 2 and you get 56.31 so I'm gonna write that in here uh, 56.31 degrees and that is the argument of Z okay the next thing that you will discover is that if we write out this triangle that we have okay so let's write out let's draw out this triangle separately so you can see what I'm doing so this is the right angle triangle that is created with the um, complex number modulus as the hypotenuse so if I draw out this triangle, okay, I have theta over here, which is 56.31 degrees. I have the modulus, which is um, square root of 13. Okay, and I have the vertical line so the right angle is over here and the vertical line is three units and the horizontal line is two units okay now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna write out the trigonom tri trigonometry ratios for sine and cosine and you'll see why I'm writing this out in a second Okay, so sine theta equals opposite over hypotenuse. Now I'm going to substitute the numbers that I have in here in this triangle into the formula. So the opposite side is 3, the adjacent side is 2, and the hypotenuse is square root of 13 because this is my theta. So let's substitute those numbers in. So I have sine 56.31 equals 3 over square root of 13 
Okay, now if I rewrite this, if I rearrange this to make 3 the subject, then I have square root of 13 times sine 56.31 equals 3. Okay, so in other words, I've made 3 the object. The subject, not object. Okay, I'm going to do the same thing with cosine, so I'm going to substitute the numbers into this equation. You'll see why I'm doing all of this in a second. Just bear with me. So I rearrange this to make two of the subjects. Okay, so now I have three as a subject and two as a subject. Okay, now if you have a look at our original standard form equation, I have the 2 used over here and I have the oh, oops wrong color I have the 2 used over here and I have the 3 used over here so what I'm gonna do is now substitute the expression I have for 3 into where 3 is into, uh, into the standard form and I'm going to substitute the expression for 2 into the standard form as well so I get z equals so let me write this out again z equals 2 plus 3i that's the standard form and now we're trying to get it to convert into polar form so I'm going to use the expression I have for 2 which is that one square root of 13 um, cos 56.31 and I have a plus in the middle so it's a plus and I have 3 which is square root of 13 sine 56.31 and I have an I here at the end. Okay, I know this is all very confusing at the moment, but you will see an easier way of doing all this soon. Okay, now you can see that both terms have a square root of 13. So I'm going to take the square root of 13 out it's by factorizing. So I get square root of 13 bracket cos 56.31 plus so I've taken out the square root of 13 to the front so I don't write it here so it's sine 56.31 I okay um, the next thing I'm gonna do is I'm going to shorten this even more because I can you can see that there is a 56.31 in both of these terms. So the short way of writing this is simply square root of 13 CIS uh CIS uh 50 six point three one okay so CIS the C represents cos the S represents sine and the I represents the imaginary number so that is simply um, what those three letters mean and this final result here is what we call polar form okay so all the calculations that we have done in order to get to polar form um, basically 
anything that I have done from this point onwards, from this point onwards, is just to show you what it all means. Okay, to get to polar form, the only thing you need to do is find the modulus, find the argument, and then you can write it in this form because square root of 13 is the modulus and 56.31 is the argument of z. Okay, so basically the formula that you need is in standard form if we have z equals um, x plus y i where x and y are real numbers okay then in standard form sorry in um, polar form what you will have is z equals R cis theta where R is the modulus of Z and theta is the argument of Z. Okay, so hopefully you guys now understand um, how to convert from standard form into polar form. Uh, see you guys next time.